Today, I'm going to show you a little bit about what's uh, Microsoft Graph Toolkit and some of the features that we have. Um, a, sh a little peek on, you know, the new features that we have, such as the new uh, person card redesign, and um, we'll go from there. Um, here you see I just have an empty folder. Uh, I'm going to go into the simple sample just to uh, get started from, you know, a brand new uh, HTML page and see how, how, we, how we would add uh, the Graph Toolkit components into it. And there's nothing in it. What I'm going to do is just create an index.html. Um, and then I'll pull up my code editor. And let me also make this bigger. Um, going into the index.html, um, just gonna start with, you know, a brand new uh, default HTML template. And from here, how you could um, introduce the Microsoft Graph Toolkit component into it is attaching a script tag, uh, where I'm assuming that I'm just showing a simple sample of, you know, using the vanilla HTML and JavaScript. So it, whenever that you needed to read about where to get resources for Microsoft Graph Toolkit, you can go to aka.ms slash mgt docs. I already have one open right here, so I'm just going to go there directly. And under the Get Started tab in the overview, if I scroll down, you can find where um, our, our uh, MGT script is that's ready for you to drop on your page. You can also import this directly in your JavaScript um, by using the Microsoft slash MGT package in the NPM. And coming back to uh, this file, I'm going to edit right after the body. And now it's added. Uh, the, after you, like we already imported the MGT um, script, what we need to do to enable um, this page to connect it to, to the graph, you only need two lines of code. The first one, we're going to need a MGT MCL provider. Um, and all you need for the provider is supplying a client ID. Uh, this client ID comes from your Azure AAD app registration. I don't think I have time to show that today, and I'm I'm just going to assume a lot of people already know how to do that in this call. If you don't, feel free to reach out. Um, I can point you to the right documentations or videos, or I can show you one-on-one. -on -one. All of those are um, available. So um, since I'm not going to show that process, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a uh, client ID right here replace that with the client ID. And the other thing that um, after that I imported the MSAW provider is I will add a logging component. And here shortly I'll show you what are all the components that's available and how you can explore it. Um, go live right here at the bottom right in Visual Studio Code. This is a plugin um, that kind of enables a live server for you to uh, quickly see what's in your local host. Starting that, coming back here, I'm going to go to localhost 5500. And when you are creating your Azure uh, AD app, you know, all the redirections, this needs to be set up as the localhost 5500 and selecting the uh, correct flows. Uh, again, if you want to uh, learn more about that, just let me know. And ta -da, here it is, a logging component already uh, on your screen because my browser is signing in as a Megan. So this is signing in as a Megan. And there are some quick functionalities when you click on it. You can see a little bit of detail and sign out of the account if you wish. So that is how quickly that we can start with um, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit in a HTML file. And I said that I was going to show you guys where to explore all these components. So if you go to mgt.dev, this is the playground that we built on top of um, something called Storybook. And it is a well-known uh, community project um, that showcases you know, uh, web components or other frameworks components or help you test and build and isolate components along the ways as well. Uh, here you got like a list of components that we have. Uh, in prod, and we have a lot others coming um, for 
Uh, maybe they're not planned for 2.0, but we have, you know, we're constantly taking feedback from the community and Microsoft partners in order to know uh, what are the things that people are interested in. So if you have an idea and uh, wanted to, you know, wanted that to become um, a result of part of the Microsoft Grab Toolkit, please let the team know. And we can figure out whether that's something on our roadmap or if you can help us uh, build it uh, as a collaborative project. So um, another thing that I wanted to show you guys within the playground is on the right side here is a code editor that you can just immediately, um, you know, explore some of the functionalities in um, or for the components. For example, if I wanted to customize uh, this person object and uh, some of the ways or if I needed more information is right here, there's a canvas tab and a doc docs tab. Scrolling down on the docs tab, you can get a list of attributes that you can use within your HTML to tweak your components. And there's also a list of JavaScript properties that you can use to change the look and view of um, this object. So I'm actually not gonna go too deep into that, um, but the, a good place to try and you know look at um, how to use uh, a, a more advanced way, I guess, of connecting to the graph when there's uh, not a component that's bound to a specific API is you can use the MGT Git and I'll supply a resource, giving it a graph version and the scope. Uh, it also supports paging and then you can, there's a lot of things that you can explore right here. So uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is I'm going to go to Graph Explorer since I know this is already live. Starting now, we will have toolkit components right here in the uh, Graph Explorer. I don't know if you guys know about this yet. Um, for example, there's me. I think the photo one might also have it. Go to photo, there's a grab toolkit component. Uh, so you can see, you know, the cor corresponding uh, HTML and some of the JavaScript maybe there is or CSS that relates to the components that you can use when you're um, exploring the graph API directly from here. And this is also a new project for us in collaboration with the Graph Explorer team. Um, if you want to know more, let me know, or if you have suggestions, let me know. And um, I've, uh, recently I've gotten some community feedback saying like, you know, every time you show us um, the graph toolkit, it's all, it always seems like it's super simple, but um, I'm kind of worried that it's not gonna fit into my project because it goes uh, into details about a lot of things. So I'm actually gonna go into a little details today on customizing one of um, the, or some of the components to show, you know, how do you, um, fit your own company design and adding these components and into a full flash kind of uh, application. So what I'm gonna do is, give me one second, let me just pull this over. I have a sample open here. Um, there is not a lot going on in this page. Uh, all I have, you know, other than what I just showed you with the MSOP provider and login, it's all the fluff that I pre-set up so that I don't have to write CSS and JavaScript on spot. And this JavaScript file I actually don't have a lot. Uh, it's just like a converting time from one format into the other. And I'm loading the MGT uh, script directly from a preview version of our own repo so that you can see what's the newest thing that's coming. So if I uh, do a yarn start, and it's running, looks good. I'm just gonna close this one. And go to here, I'm gonna find the sample folder. Those examples right there. So I'm actually going to show you um, a, a, just a little bit more of an example of you know what you can do with the graph toolkit. 
uh, we're, I'm introducing you to a scenario where almost all the uh, companies or enterprise will run into, which is employee onboarding. And you can see on this page, this is just an image to make it look better. And there's a logging component that we just talked about that Megan has already signed in, some artwork, and then three columns with preset um, CSS. So what I want to do is starting with, you know, what if I wanted to customize how this language is looking like and by saying, welcome to PAX, Megan, it's your first day, and I wanted to make it um, mention Megan's name. So what I can do is right here, I'm going to add a MGT person component uh, where the person query equals me, uh, which is whoever is going to sign into this application. And then a really cool thing that we have is we have a lot of templates within each uh, components that we have. If you go to, again, documentation, you can find all the available templates and the data objects that's passed down for each template. By default, this template is going to give me a person object. And what I can do is wrap it up in a div using, uh, we're kind of following some of the well-known uh, syntax of using data or passing down data objects, double um, curly brackets. And in the person object, I wanted to show Megan's given name. And I'm just going to say, welcome to PAX Megan. Maybe I'll add a little emoji and save that and come back here. Ta -da! Megan's name is already here. And uh, another thing is uh, coming down here, you know, I'm just going to add some default MGT components to show you what it is uh, or what, what they can do for your pro daily productivity. Uh, I'm going to add in MGT agenda. And then here we're going to use the MGT to do components. Uh, Louise has been asking for this, I remember on Twitter, to separate the APIs between MGT to do and MGT tasks. We actually did that in the 2.0 preview. Um, now the to do API connects directly to the graph to do, or the MGT to do component connects to directly to the MGT or uh, graph to do API. It is so early, I'm slurring my words. Uh, I'm also going to add MGT people here. Here is going to connect to a list of people that you are, you know, most work, uh, worked with. So here you got a kind of a view of, um, you know, Megan's first day, here's everything that she needs to do. Here's all the checklists that, that she needed to worry about, uh, checklist items. And then here's everybody that she may or may not want to reach out to, you know, to talk about the new role. And I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into one of the components. And this is kind of coming from a community request and, and it, it got tweaked later on for uh, requirements, but I think it might be interesting because people are saying like, what if when I'm showing a list of people, you know, I actually want to show, uh, want to put different kinds of data in it. So what we're going to do is add a template here. Um, and there's a lot of um, uh, logics that you can add right here in your HTML as well. For example, I could do a uh, data for uh, the people template by default passed down the people object and I wanted to loop through everybody in this object so I can just say person in people and I come down and say give it another div and I wanted to only show uh, the uh, like real people objects versus uh, there are some system accounts that mixed together with this object. So um, in this one, I'm going to say if person actually has a user principal name, uh, then I'm going to show it. But then coming down uh, in the people object, what we're going to show is a list of MGT person. Uh, the reason that I'm actually specifying this is uh, because I wanted to show some different property. Uh, let's just start from here and see what it go how it goes. So I'm going to say everybody in this component, I'm going to show them uh, uh, oh, I need to give it a person query, that's why. So in the person query, I'm going to say for all the person, for everybody in this people object, I want to show their uh, user principal name, or I, I want to use their user principal name as uh, going to the graph to fetch their data. Here it is. Here's like everybody's little uh, bubble. Um, the reason that it only shows a bubble because 
um, the person component by default only the view only shows uh, like no name or anything only uh, is a picture so how do we further customize that is when you if you remember that I'm saying that there's a lot of attributes and JavaScript properties that you can tweak to change how your HTML uh, look and feel if I go property first line property equals display name and I'm going to say the line two property equals job title. And I also wanted a default back to mail address if this person doesn't have a job title. And uh, when I'm setting up the view, I want it to have two lines um, of information and uh, you can also set it to be one line or default. And I also wanted to show a person card. Yeah. Live typing is hard. Uh, there's hover and click, both uh, options that you can use in order to enable a person card um, with MG2 persons. Now that I come back here, uh, this is actually a little, did I spell something? I think there's a typo in, in line 45. I think okay. so. it's date, not data. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, okay. Now it shows very nicely a list of people right here. You know, I'm showing their name and their title versus their email address. And when I hover over this or click it, I already forgot that I set it to be clicked. Uh, this is the 2.0 person card, which kind of looks like the uh, Outlook one that we have. And also uh, I think it's called live person card in the SharePoint environment. You can see you know, more details about how to contact those people, send them a message directly from this card. Um, showing off their uh, organizational uh, charts, uh, showing the emails between you and this person or both of you participated in. If this, uh, if Miriam <laughs> or whoever this is has more information on their uh, LinkedIn information and they uh, authorized us to show them, then you can see more of their personal data as well. So that's part of the 2.0 uh, MGD person card redesign. And uh, the reason, again, the reason that I wanted to show more of, you know, how to include MGT into all these um, more app is because a lot of people have been asking for, you know, can you show us more of a complicated uh, sample? So I'm just going to copy the rest of my code and paste it in here because I don't think I would have time to do all of it, but the sample is available in our repo if you want to go check it out uh, right here. You know, I, I can show a timeline view versus a uh, email or just a, a calendar events view. I could show only the important data of to do list that I wanted to talk about and so far and so forth. And that's that. Um, I also wanted to point out two resources for people who wanted to use more or who wanted to build um, applications with MGT and enable it in your Teams tab or SharePoint environment, we have a list of providers that's out there that will enable you to add your application uh, and then uh, doing the authentication in the background for you. And you today we've shown you the MSL version and there's a lot of others. And for the Teams one, um, there was a developer live show that me, Nicole, and Jeremy did during build. And this is kind of going to a depth of how to build a Teams application uh, with MGT enabled. And we're going to show you how to add a bot to it to help you manage uh, some of the information in that app. Uh, we also talked about MGT React, which is a React uh, wrapper. If you wanted to use MGT within a React environment that handles a lot of the plumbing for you out of the box. So this is a good resource for people who wanted to do Teams tab and React um, application. Uh, here's another one uh, that two of our awesome community members who helped me so much for the project as well, David and Hugo, had this um, uh, presentation. I know they've been doing this a lot in different conferences to enable uh, MGT components in your SharePoint environment. So this is an awesome resource for people who wanted to do it within SharePoint. Uh, if you want to go check it out, I can also share this. I think they did this during the PMP call as well. 
just to summarize, Beth, really great stuff. And it's awesome to see with simple uh, tags with the craft toolkit, you can actually build complex solutions. It's just mind blowing uh, how much stuff is being abstracted for uh, with these controls. It's it's really, yeah. really cool. It's, uh, awesome, awesome stuff. Thank you, Beth. Thank you.